We only have two divisions left to cover. We're going to knock one more out today with the AFC South. As always, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. If you have any fantasy football questions or comments, put them in the comment section and I will answer them on the next football video. This is going to be a very interesting division, to say the least. Um, I have so, I, We're going to start off at the bottom of the division like we always do. Um, but I, I'm going to start off by saying I don't think this division is going to be as good as people think. Uh, of course, we all are pretty sure that Jacksonville is going to be garbage. Uh, but everyone has their own favorite team. I think it's going to be competitive, but the records are not going to be all that great. Um, you have Tennessee with their powerful run game. Can they keep that up even though they lost Jack Conklin at right tackle? The Texans, can they protect Deshaun Watson? They end up losing DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, can Brandon Cooks and Randall Cobb fill in as, a viable, rep as viable replacements uh, for Hopkins' targets and production? And then you have Indianapolis with uh, old man quarterback Phillip Rivers coming in, seeing if they can turn the tide of their offense. So we have plenty of storylines to cover. We will start at the bottom of the division, as always, with the Jacksonville Jaguars. I have them going one and 15. I, I don't see much upside from this team from any standpoint. I mean, I know some people really like Gardner Minshew. They think he, you know, maybe he can win three or four games. Um, but Leonard Fournette wanted out. I still think there's a good chance he could get traded at the trade deadline. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me. And I know this is a stretch, but this is there's a lot of people opting out of the NFL season because of, you know, certain health issues they may have or if they had cancer before. Well, one of the one of the guys who has cancer or had cancer was James Conner. Uh, and, the, of course, him being the running back of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, it would not surprise me if Leonard Fournette actually was signed by the Pittsburgh Steelers. I, I know that or was traded to the Pittsburgh Steelers midseason. It wouldn't surprise me. I don't want that to happen. But I'm saying if John, James Conner opts out of the season and the Steelers are in playoff contention and maybe the running game isn't picking it up, maybe Benny Snell uh, is struggling, isn't getting a whole lot of yards per carry, it wouldn't surprise me if Leonard Fournette was signed by a team like the Steelers or maybe some other team, you know, that uh, there's a running back injury. But most years we see running backs get injured. Uh, so I think he could be traded. And for that reason, that is why I'm saying that you should be willing to take a chance in the later rounds on Raquel Armstead, who's the backup, former running back at Temple. Of course, Temple tough, and uh, you know he does have that level of toughness, but he's very good in the passing game, good in open space, can make you miss. Uh, especially in PPR formats, he's worth taking a late chance on because he'll get you some immediate production as a uh, receiver, uh, though they do want to try to use Fournette more in that uh, way. But for the most part, I would say for the Jacksonville Jaguars, uh, Raquel Armstead is a late-round sleeper, but my bold fantasy prediction for the Jacksonville Jaguars is that DJ Shark will be a top 10 fantasy football wide receiver in 2020. We saw the rapport that he had with Gardner Minshew last year. When Minshew came in, he took off. And he, there were only a few games the rest of the year where he really slowed down. I picked him up off of the waiver wire uh, last year, like I think week two or week three. And he absolutely lit it up for most of the year. Uh, and he was a fantasy gold mine for me. He, really, the only my drafting was not that great. Okay, my first two picks were Joe Mixon and Devontae Adams. Neither of them worked out that great for me. But the two that saved my season were really Mark Andrews, who I got in the 16th round of my draft last year, and then picking up DJ Shark. They really kept my team afloat. Um, and then towards the end of the year, Kyler Murray and others turned it on and really got my team's production up. But... Going back to Jacksonville, I really like DJ Shark. Uh, they do have other receivers there. It's not like it, like we think of Jacksonville, there. this offense is going to be absolutely horrible. And the offensive line still has a ways to go. But if you look at the skill position players, they have some intriguing pieces. D.D. Westbrook, I still like. I liked him coming out of Oklahoma. He uh, has some upside. Keelan Cole, probably not a whole much from not a, probably not gonna give you much from a fantasy perspective, uh, but he's still there. Uh, he's shown some flashes. Lavishka Chanel, a receiver that I really like coming out of Colorado before the injury at the combine and kind of hurting his draft stock. I had him pegged as a first round pick. Uh, he's can do it all and stuff. He actually reminds me a little bit of Sammy Watkins. 
uh, not Sammy Watkins, DeAndre Hopkins, my bad. Uh, Sammy Watkins a little bit faster, but not near as consistent. Uh, but Chenault can catch everything. He's kind of a do-it-all guy, can come on on jet sweeps, can even line up in the backfield. A little bit more versatile than Hopkins, but they can both catch in traffic. And they both have a similar build, so that's why I kind of compared the two. Uh, in uh, a tight end position, you have Tyler Eifert. We've talked a lot about late-round tight ends. Don't take Tyler Eifert. There's enough other good late-round tight ends you can take. You don't need to worry your time with a guy who will probably be injured by week three. Josh Oliver, though, is a tight end that I do like in the future. Uh, I'm just not sure what his role is going to be with Eifert there, and I believe they still have James O'Shaughnessy there. So probably not a huge role for him, uh, but a guy in the future that I think you should consider um, if you're in dynasty leagues. But 1-15 for the Jaguars, not a whole lot else to talk about. The defense, they still have some pieces there, and Gakwe still could get traded. Josh Allen, the second year out of uh, Kentucky. Uh, Ronnie Harrison you have in the secondary. Of course, they uh, bring in C.J. Henderson through the draft. Um, Miles Jack they still have at linebacker, but there's they lost a lot of pieces, and I'm not sure if they can replace all of them. To the Tennessee Titans, I have finishing in third place in this division. I have them going 7-9, and nine. and I'm sure if a Titans fan watches, I'll, I'll get chewed out in the comments section, but I'm just not as high on the Titans, mainly because they're so built on the run game. Arthur Smith did a really good job as the offensive coordinator last year. He really got Ryan Tannehill going, uh, but they really fed off of that run game, and we all know that. Derrick Henry was an absolute beast last year. Uh, but Jack Conklin was a big part of that. Now the Browns signed him. Uh, he's going to be the Browns' right tackle now. They have um, a couple pieces there. Uh, Dennis Kelly is a guy that could come in. I believe he's going to be the starter at the beginning of the year. Isaiah Wilson's the rookie uh, who will probably take over uh, next year or the year following. He is a very good run blocker. Uh, but Dennis Kelly is only average at best, in my opinion. So... The offensive line is not going to be quite as dominant as it was last year. Derrick Henry, he got his money. Uh, they signed him to a long-term deal. But I don't. I, I still trust Ryan Tannehill to an extent. And A.J. Brown, a lot of people are saying, you know, he's going to be this year's Michael Thomas and stuff. Stephen Poor actually mentioned that to me um, a week or so ago on how a lot of people are talking him up to be this year's Michael Thomas. He's going to, you know, be, come from a, off a really good season and, you know, become one of the elite receivers in the game. Uh, I'm not quite that high on A.J. Brown, uh, but we'll see. What, it all depends on how what kind of quarterback we see from Ryan Tannehill. For one, he has to stay healthy. He did last year, um, and this offense really seemed to fit him, but they fed off that run game. Some games Ryan Tannehill only threw for 150 yards, uh, but it made up for it just because, you know, you know, whether he got a rushing touchdown or threw for a lot of touchdowns in the red zone. But really, at the end of the day, it's going to come down to can they still pound the ball? They brought in Darrington Evans, who's probably going to be the third down back. Another guy similar in the same boat as Raquel Armstead, except uh, he, we Armstead has that chance of becoming a starter later in the year, whereas obviously unless Derrick Henry goes down, Darrington Evans will not be. But I think Evans is a guy also in PPR dynasty formats, a guy that you could take a chance on in the later rounds. Uh, but my prediction for the Tennessee Titans is 7-9. and nine. My fantasy advice is to take a chance on Jonu Smith, one of my favorite late-round tight ends. I'm going to say he, this is a bold prediction, he's going to be a top-10 fantasy tight end in 2020. And I, I, he, is going to, he is their undisputed number one. I believe someone came out and said that he's going to be their undisputed number one. Uh, he's going to be the undisputed number one tight end. Uh, Anthony Ferksker is still there. Uh, but for the most part... Uh, A.J. Brown's going to, of course, be the number one target. Corey Davis, you have it number two. Um, but they have to have someone up the seams, and I think he's going to have a big part in the red zone offense. So we are halfway home in this division. Let's go to the Houston Texans. I have them going 8-8. Eight and eight. And for I know a lot of people have them, you know, 10-6. and six. They're 11-5 and five team. But I think that loss of DeAndre Hopkins is going to, be, is going to hurt this team a lot. The offensive line still isn't totally fixed. Uh, Laramie Tunzel they brought in, Max Sharping, second year out of Northern Illinois. Maybe he can improve. Um, and his second year didn't show a whole lot last year. Played a little bit of guardian tackle. Uh, in the defense, they have a lot of young pieces. In the secondary, they still have Bradley Roby. Uh, they brought in Lonnie Johnson last year through the draft. They brought in Vernon Hargraves this offseason um, is, is more depth. Um, and the, the, honestly, the depth at corner for them is really good right now. They did lose um, their... They did lose who they originally had. Um, the name is slipping me right now. Uh, 
Johnson, the cornerback. Um, he he's not there anymore. But for the most part, they still have their secondary in place. Eric Reed, not Eric Reed, Justin Reed, still there. But the front seven, uh, they brought in Ross Blacklock through the draft. wasn't a huge fan of him really. Uh, and then they also brought in uh, out of Florida defensive end, uh, not. For some reason, I keep trying to think Ja'Kai Polite, and that is not who it is. Um, and the name is slipping me, but they did have, they did add some intriguing pieces to the defensive line. Uh, but for the most part, there's nothing super exciting. They don't have a bunch of pass rush. They still have good linebackers, Whitney Merciless, Zach Cunningham, uh, Benardrick McKinney. Uh, the linebacking core is going to be solid. Of course, J.J. Watt is still there. Uh, but I'm just not a huge fan of this defense overall. I don't expect them to get a ton of sacks, which means probably don't take them in fantasy. Um, th- at the tight end position on offense, I will say uh, one guy that you know nobody really saw coming out last year was Darren Fells, the older tight end who broke out onto the scene last year. Nobody's talking about him in fantasy this year, but he's a guy. If you, I know we've talked about a lot about younger late round tight ends. If you don't go an older late round tight end. Darren Fells may be a little bit underlooked right now. He had an excellent fantasy year last year. I'm surprised he's not getting a little bit more love. Of course, Jordan Aikens is still there, uh, so he'll probably get some uh, targets as well. But uh, when I'm looking at this team, I see 8-8. Eight and eight. I know Deshaun Watson's a good quarterback, and maybe I'm underestimating them, but they made so many poor moves this offseason. I don't trust Bill O'Brien anymore. I just, I, I don't know. Someone tell me in the comment section, should I be more excited about the Texans? I just don't, I don't know. What is there to be excited about, really, outside of Deshaun Watson? Is there really anything that I'm missing with this team? Let me know in the comment section. Uh, but 8-8 eight and eight is what I have. Um, and really, my only fantasy advice I can give is maybe take a late, maybe take um, a late-round flyer on Darren Fells. Uh, but there's not a whole... There's not a whole lot in the fantasy perspective that I can really get excited about either. Kaimi Fairbairn, if you want to take a kicker, I don't know. He had a kind of an off year last year, a little bit inaccurate. But to the who I have winning this division is the Indianapolis Colts. I have them going nine and seven, and I think this is this could arguably be the worst division this year. And a lot I know a lot of people would argue that uh, very strongly. Uh, but Philip Rivers isn't the same quarterback he once was. T.Y. Hilton, I, there's almost rumblings that they could possibly trade him. I don't think that will happen. Now, the offensive line is better than what it was in Los Angeles for Phillip Rivers. And the defense, they do have some intriguing pieces with Rocky Sin. Um, I believe they brought in Xavier Rhodes as well. Um, th- so they have some decent corners. Of course, you have uh, Kahari Willis and Amani no, Hooker, Malik Hooker uh, at safety. So the secondary is pretty decent. They brought in Ben Banigou through the draft last year, showed some upside. Darius Leonard, of course, that linebacker. Bobby Okariki. Um, and then there's uh, Danico Autry on the defensive line. Of course, they, their big addition this offseason was DeForest Buckner, who will hopefully help that pass rush, who needs to get more sacks this year. Um, they play it very safe on defense. I think they're a little bit more aggressive. That could actually help them. Uh, but they play a whole lot of zone, bend but don't break defense. Um, not a huge fan of their style, so I would say avoid their defense and fantasy kicker. I think they have Chase McLaughlin now for their kicker. Um, I would I don't really think he brings a whole lot of upside either. But for my fantasy advice, is take a chance on Michael Pittman and Trey Burton in the later rounds because we know Philip Rivers likes throwing to those bigger targets. He's had a great time with Hunter Henry. Antonio Gates. He's always had a good relationship with his tight ends. Jack Doyle is the other tight end there. I'm from a fantasy perspective, I'd rather take Trey Burton just because I'm not a big Jack Doyle fan, but I know others are. Uh, but Michael Pittman is the guy that I'm excited about. Do not be surprised. Do not be surprised if Michael Pittman is the highest scoring fantasy rookie wide receiver this year. And I'm going to say he finishes top three in fantasy among rookie wide receivers this year. Um, but really, you know that that's the division in a nutshell. I, this division is wide open. I think you have three teams. Uh, that have a chance at the division, uh, but my favorite is the Colts. I like Frank Reich. I think he's the best coach of them, um, and I th- I really like their draft. I think Jonathan Taylor coming in, he could be a beast uh, when given the opportunity. Of course, I think Marlon Mack will start off the year as the starter, uh, but with that offensive line, if Jonathan Taylor 
uh, proves his worth early on, uh, that job may not be Marlon Max for long. But that is about all I wanted to touch on in this division. We only have one more division left, which is my Steelers division. We will get into, on the next video, the AFC North preview. I'm looking forward to it. And, you know, a lot of people are, you know, thinking, you know, is he going to pick the Steelers to win the division? Is he going to show his bias? Well, if I do, it won't be by bias, but you'll have to tune in and see. Um, I hope you guys will all tune in next time when we have another video coming out. We'll see if we can get it out tomorrow or the day after. Uh, but that is going to do it all for this video on the AFC South. If you have any thoughts you want to add on this division, put in the comment section. I will answer it on the next video. <coughs> and as always, wow, choked up. Only one division left. <coughs> no. Uh, but anyways, excuse me. Be sure to like this video, share this video, and subscribe to this channel. That's going to do it all for today. Excuse my voice. We will see you next time. Thank you all for watching.